Lorna, thank you so much for talking to Run Ultra um, about your amazing run. You did uh, joggle, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It ran the right way. Um, but you chose a, a different route. You chose, initially, you chose to do the three peaks, national three peaks. Um, tell me about it. Tell me why you chose to do it and what your method was in choosing that route? So my, my reason for doing it is, is it, it, it was a decision over a period of time rather than something I thought of one day and then said, right, I'm going to do it. So I would say about eight years ago, something like that, I was just sat there on the sofa in my old flat and thought, I wonder if anyone's run from John O'Groats to Land's End before, in my complete naivety, didn't realise that quite a few people have done this. Um, and then I started reading up on it. I read the book by Sharon Gator. And uh, just I got into reading a lot of books about adventuring and running. And um, at the same time, I was you know, buying lots of trail running magazines. I got really heavily into trail running particularly and would cut out little things on adventures and ultras and had like a little pin board of dreams. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, and that all kind of led into me thinking I'd like to do my own thing rather than fly off to Peru and do an amazing ultra for five grand. I, I want to do my own thing. So I started planning the idea of running John O'Groats to Land's End. And um, the reason it became Jogal with the Three Peaks is because about two years ago, I noticed that there was now a race for Jogal where they actually carry a kit for you. And Oh, you know, really? I mean, yeah. And I believe it's done in 17, 19 days or something. So these people must be amazing runners. Um but it kind of put me off doing the normal route. I just thought I want to do something different. I want to do something that feels like mine. Mm -hmm. So um, I decided that I would go by the three mountains. And then because the idea of climbing the mountains terrified me, I thought I will climb them as well because I've suffered from anxiety in the past, probably still do a little bit with some things. And I really thought I want to push my own boundaries, really. Um so that's how the idea okay. came about, really. And your um, yeah, the charities that you're you're raising for. I mean, did that come after, or how? What sort of importance do they have to you? Yeah, I mean, I did decide to do the run, and then thought about which charities. However, I always knew I would do something for mental health. Because I'd had my own issues in the past, it, it was already important to me. Um, so, yeah, I started looking into, you know, which charities sort of would represent that the best. And I felt that mine were were just, you know, really well known and really, really good. Um, and my, um, my stepdaughter's a nurse and she also said that they are really, really helpful. Um, so and then I chose the menopause charity because I've been going through perimenopause for I don't know how long and um, I looked at what this charity did and I've actually met the lady from from the charity as well and talked to her about it and um, you know they train up doctors doctors don't actually naturally get training in the menopause at the moment so they they give free training to doctors but they also give out lots of information and setting up a helpline and you know they're still yeah. still growing, and um, I just think it's an, an amazing thing that that should be there, and that we should put the spotlight on. So yeah, excellent. So um, you you started, and I've I've read your blog. Um, you had some some trainer issues. Um, yeah, it sort of made you have to change your plans a bit. What what happened there? Yeah, basically, I, you know, I spent absolutely ages trying to decide which trainers to wear. And I thought at the time it was road, tra road trainers or trail trainers. And I even bought some hybrid trainers and tried those out. But I, wasn't, I wasn't a fan. So I quickly decided I would start in road trainers because there was a lot of road at the beginning. I'd switched to trail when I got to um, Ben Nevis. 
I had all these plans and I thought that would be fine. Not once did it occur to me that when you're doing something like this, you walk a lot. You know, you're going to walk at least 40% of mm. the time. You're going to walk on very, very technical terrain. You're going to walk when it's steep hills. And all that walking, you know, road trainers are not designed for walking. Mm. And within a matter of days, my heels were just in agony. Um, and by end of the first week, I was hobbling. Um, and that's my only explanation as to why they why they, I was in so much pain that I can think of. They were fairly new. I, they were a brand I was used to. I'd run in them before, and I have no problem running in them. Right. But if you're jogging and walking, then th- that that was a problem. Mm-hmm. And so I got to unfortunately I got to um, Ben Nevis. I got to Fort William rather, and thought didn't realize it was the trainers I should add if I realized that would have also helped didn't realize and thought oh it's all the running it's all the mileage clearly Mm -hmm. my feet can't cope with it yeah Um, and Ben Nevis of course is the highest mountain as well so I decided not to climb spend eight hours or whatever climbing the mountain and the next day it was kind of too late if you will my husband went home and I carried on the West Highland Way in my trail trainers that I hit brought to my you know because we treated it as a support point and I went off and after a couple of hours my feet were better and I thought hmm <laughs> well, well it was one of those it was too late it was too late to go back and no. um, you know with hindsight it's a wonderful thing but um, later on in the journey I did actually buy hiking trainers I called active hiking trainers because they're for people that hike really fast and sometimes run in them. Okay. And, and they were amazing. Is that and when you stopped in Ambleside? Sorry? Is that yes, when you it is. In yes, absolutely. That's what I bought in Ambleside, almost just because that was the only thing I could find. Yeah. And in the end, it turned out to be brilliant. And I then bought another pair of them later on. And um, I wouldn't use anything else if I did something like this again. That's what I would absolutely recommend. If you're doing slow running and you're doing you know a lot of hiking and hills and things as well okay. don't wear road shoes <laughs> no, no yeah okay and so how do you what's your background I mean you say this the seed of this idea started about eight years ago um and you and you started to taking cuttings and, and things of the mm. trail running but I mean had you had you had you in that eight years had you done any other adventures or, or or ultras or races of any sort? I did um, not many. Um, I did one ultra and I fully intended to do um, two others, but uh, one got I couldn't do because uh, I fell over and got 12 stitches in my knee. And the other one, there was some um, uh, other stuff going on at the time. But I did do the Lakeland um, Trails Ultra. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know how many years ago that was now. Um, I've never done a marathon. I went straight from half marathon to ultra, um, which I would completely recommend because I think they're just totally, two totally different things. Yes, yes. Um, Trail running is just completely different for me. It's a different mindset. Yes. Um, And I did a half half Ironman as well uh, in the last few years or whatever. Camping side of it, you you said in your blog that you you essentially spent most of the evening sort of planning the next day's route and then where you were going to camp at night or stay. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, I suppose perhaps because of the nature of what you were doing, you couldn't really plan that far ahead until you knew what distance you'd done the day before. I suppose. But yeah, I, yeah, good. absolutely. I kind of always wanted to not plan it too much to death I just really wanted it to be more of an adventure and more fun in that in that regard and it was but it was also a little bit stressful because I hadn't realized how long it would take me to do sort of navigation accommodation admin if you will Mm. Um, so I would sit there in the evenings thinking well I'd like to go that way um, but there's nowhere to camp or there's nowhere to stay or that I can afford so oh right I'll have to look at this route and then you'd have to sort of re-navigate and 
Um, sometimes I'd do two or three days at a time, um, but I was just, it was on a rolling basis. And every time I was in a cafe and I got Wi-Fi, I'd be there checking my message messages because I would also write to places and say, can I get a discount? Can I sleep in your garden? Um, so that was just in the background constantly. Um, no one can help you do that, can they? And no, I didn't want anyone to help me do it. So I, mm -hmm. yeah, so that, that was something that I had to do, and I did kind of enjoy it. I think if, I think if I could have wild camped the whole time, it would have taken that mm -hmm. away, because then. Yes. But the reason I didn't end up doing that, and I only wild, wild camp a couple of times, was because really I think to wild camp once you get to England, you really need to be running into the evening until when it gets dark. Mm -hmm. um because you, you, don't do really, you, you need to be discreet and um mm -hmm. I more the other way around I get up really early and then I'll run till tea time and I know I wanted to look for somewhere to mm -hmm. to kip so can I ask you um about menopause um have you noticed any changes have you had to make any adaptations to your your training or your running um what what have you noticed training wise I think um, I think before I went on HRT, I definitely noticed, you know, the hot flushes and um, just generally being hotter. It just felt like my internal climate, if you like, was just a few degrees hotter than it used to be. And you definitely notice that when you are running. I would I I, I sweat more than I used to, um, and that has so many like little rippling effects so I lose salt really easily and I have to make sure I'm getting enough electrolytes I have to make sure I'm getting enough water and um you know ironically I can go out running with my husband and and he is the man is hardly sweating and I'm there uh, with salt all around my face um wow, okay. so and that definitely has got worse in you know in my 40s and into my 50s definitely um so I have noticed that um but I think on balance with the HRT it's keep I'm managing it um I would say you probably you get slower you're you know you're a bit more tired more easily mm -hmm. um also because you might be losing sleep at night you're not sleeping as well so you're just generally more tired but the flip side of that is doing a lot of training and doing a lot of exercise you know Help. Helps you feel fitter and more alert, so yeah. it's kind of getting that balance right. I, I noticed you said in your training that you did a lot of cross training, a lot of strength mm. training in in the build up. Um, what 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 did your sort of average week look like? Oh gosh, um, well I did it. Over, I did my training over a year and a half, so it sort of built up. And um, generally, uh, my coach would get me training over a month to sort of the, the, there would be the initial week then build up over three weeks and then I'd have a recovery week um, and then that would repeat but there was a general trend of it getting harder and harder if you will mm. but in um, in a typical um, week I would uh, maybe have Monday would be a rest day slash I would do some yoga um and then Tuesday I used to go for a run with a backpack with the weighted backpack right um for about an hour and a half um and then also go to the gym and then on Wednesday I would go out for a bike ride or do a turbo workout on um, Thursday I did another strength workout and another run on Friday I would do a long run and on Saturday, I would do another long run. So I had my back to back runs. And then on Sunday, I went out on a really long hike with a backpack full of all the gear. Wow. So it was a it, it was a full on week. And mm -hmm. those obviously those numbers in terms of distances got longer towards the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. Until the last month, I went into um, I went into a taper, obviously. Towards the end. Yeah, a big taper. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah, the, the strength and the. Cross training obviously makes a big difference, doesn't it? Mm. Um, I was going to say, do you, did you have a time in mind when you started? What time of year? Do you mean? Uh, or? No, a time to do the joggle. 
Oh, I see. Yeah, well, originally based, basing it on um, climbing the mountains as well, uh, I was aiming for seven weeks all in, but that included three essentially rest days and I slash wiggle room days, I called them, because you don't know what the weather's going to be like when you get to a mountain. So right. I um, I thought, well, I'll have these three days and if I get to a mountain and it's horrendous, I can always do it the next day. Um so that was the plan. But then, of course, when I um, decided not to climb the mountains, I thought, well, I'll just have the mountain days as rest days and I'll use the other three days as wiggle room days. Um, in the end, the way it turned out, I honestly, I could have finished a couple of days earlier um, because I probably then had too many rest days, which I didn't use. Um but um, I'd agreed with my husband that I would be there at the finishing line in Lands End on a certain day. Right. So we, we had a discussion and we kept it to the same. So, okay. yeah, I think it was 49 and a half days in the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, well done. <laughs> you've, you've managed to raise nearly your targets for both your charities. So yeah. maybe we can uh, we can do a little push and hope ask our lovely viewers maybe help just nudge you up to those two targets that'd be great thank you and no it's been it's been fascinating thank you very much for talking to me cheers thank you